It's the grandson of Right Thought. Welcome to the School of Marvelous Light. I am relieved. I am peaceful. I am relieved and I am peaceful, unaffected by the 3D world. How are you, little block? <laughs> a man and a woman. What is a man and a woman? Well, first, let's start with a man. What is a man? Let's see. A man is someone who is over six feet tall. He makes over six figures. He has lots of friends and status, that's a man, dresses well, speaks well, smokes cigars, that's a man, smokes cigars, drinks scotch, that's a man, Tells other people what to do. Is an alpha. Is dominant. Very assertive. Logical. This is a man. Emotionless. Not in his feelings. Drives a nice big fancy car. <clears throat> Lives in a big old fancy house. All the other men want to be him. And all the women want him. That's a man. Right? Am I correct everybody? Do we all agree? I mean that's what you're all saying a man is right? Everything I just mentioned, would you all agree with me that that's what makes a man in this world? Well, I'm getting some friction here. All of y'all don't agree with that ideology of what a man is. Well, then why is that what you say a man is, world? Is that not desired? What I just described by men? And by women? Men, don't you want to be what I just described? And women, don't you want a man like I just described? That's what you're all saying a man is. Isn't that the ideal? Talks a bunch of shit. Got a big mouth. Wears a big old piece of jewelry around his neck and a big old piece of jewelry on his wrist. <clears throat> Is arrogant, loud and flashy. Isn't that a man? I mean, that's what you all have said a man is to be desired. Correct? Correct. Okay, now we're going to look and see what I think, what I say a man is. 
and then we're going to compare the two, and we're going to see which one is true and which one isn't. I say a man is long-suffering. That's a man. Someone who is long-suffering. Someone who is kind. I say a man is someone who is kind. I say a man is someone who does not envy. A man that envies not. I say a man is one who does not puff himself up and is lifted up in his own ability as a man, but is humble. That's what I say a man is. I say a man is one who does not behave himself unseemly. He's not messy. And he doesn't be behave himself improperly. Or inappropriate. Or ungentlemanly. He doesn't behave himself impolite, or out of place, or shameful, or indelicate. What do you say? Because that's what I say a man is. I say a man is one who thinks no evil. And he has great self-control, and is not easily provoked. That's what I say a man is, someone who has self-control. I say a man is someone who does not rejoice in injustice, in unbalanced scales, but that one that rejoices when the truth prevails. That's a man. A man is one who is able to bear all things, A man is able to believe all things. He's able to hope all things. That's a man. One who is able to endure anything. One who does not fail. That's a man. Now let's compare the two. You said a man got to be over six feet tall. Right? Now, if you don't believe me, ask any woman. <clears throat> get a thousand women in America that are of marriageable age, single women, can bear children, healthy, young, attractive women. Get a thousand American, healthy, young, attractive, modern women and ask them. Would they desire a man that is over six feet tall? And then out of those thousand women, see how many say yes. And then that will tell you what the world considers to be a man. A man that makes a lot of money. Do you notice I didn't say anything about his height when I said what a man is? Do you notice I didn't say anything about how much money he makes? Because I got a question for you. When a man was born into this world, did he come to this world naked? And when he leaves, will he leave naked? So then everything he came here with, where was it? If he was naked on the outside, where did all of his gifts come from then? They had to come from the inside. He came here with it in him. What you see when you see a man is only coming from what's inside of him, not outside of him. Everything that you're looking at, whether it be a key, whether it be a bottle of hand sanitizer, whether it be a pin or a pair of scissors, every one of those things that you can see were thought up in the mind of a man first. So 
So then I want to know how in the hell does what a man has on the outside of his own body determine whether he is a man or not. So let me get this right. If there are two men standing there and one has a hat on and one doesn't, then the one with the hat on must be a man because he has a hat on his head. What? Two men are there. One is riding a horse and one is walking on foot. Well, the one riding the horse must be a man. The one walking must not be. How many times does our father have to tell you all not to judge outward appearance? I mean, honestly, how many times did the father have to tell you all that before you understand that that's wisdom? Sometimes I myself marvel when the words come out of my mouth because I'm saying to myself, I'm really having to tell people not to judge outward appearance, even though Abayah said that so many times in his word. Yes, because they insist on doing it. It is over and over and over and over and over in the scriptures. Do not do that. But yet the world continues to do it. I just described it to you. Can a man add one cubit to his own stature by taking thought? No, he cannot. So then why are you worried about your height as a man? When there have been many men. I'll just grab one out of the bunch named Napoleon. Y'all know who that is, right? Now, when a man got a Napoleon complex, what do that mean? Why is that phrase? Why has that particular man become a proverb? Why? Is it because of his stature? And so that phrase, Napoleon complex, references a man who, because of his small stature, overcompensates by being very domineering and very dominant and doing dominant things. I'll give you an example. You say a man who is insecure, has a Napoleon complex, he drives a big ass truck with big ass tires and rims. And when you see the little guy hop out, you say, oh, he must have a Napoleon complex. It could just be that he like big ass trucks with big ass wheels. But you judge an outward appearance. See? See? Just like Napoleon, when he marched in there, if you was judging uh, outward appearance when you looked at Napoleon, then you was probably going to get killed up like how he killed up a whole lot of them nations where he conquered. It's stupid to do that, is what I'm telling y'all. So that means you stupid if you do that. Now, how can I prove you stupid? If you read your Bible, then you will see that God will expressly say, I don't judge like man judges, like y'all, see? I don't judge like you do. So then, who's stupid? God or you? God or man? He also said in another place, let every man be a liar, but let Abba be true. So then, here we go again. Which one is true and which one is a lie? So then, which one is smart and which one is stupid? Man's ideals are stupid. Yes, why? Because if you take a person that's over six feet tall, that makes over six figures, which any NBA player, will you get wisdom from that man? Well, you don't know. Well, he's six feet seven inches tall and he makes $1.7 million a year. So he's high value, right? You stupid fools. You don't know if this man is long-suffering. You don't know if he's kind. You don't know if he's patient. You don't know if he's any of those qualities that Abaya says a man is. You don't know if he is those things. Why? Because those things can only be found in the heart. So now do you see why Abaya judges the heart of a man and not what he sees on the outside? Because I'll ask you this. Can a man be kind and become a millionaire? You will all say yes. Can a man be unkind and become a millionaire? 
you all say yes. So then being a millionaire doesn't make you anything, does it? See how that works? But can a millionaire enter into the kingdom of heaven? Can a billionaire enter into the kingdom of heaven? Well, the scripture says it's harder for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven than for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. So if you're a rich man, you are going to have... It's, it, what, that's, that's pretty impossible, right? For a camel to go through an eye of a needle. You can't even get a piece of thread through the eye of a needle. And when you try, you have to do the technique. Which is if you're smart and you've learned, like I did when I took home economics in school, <laughs> you learn to cut that piece of thread at an angle so that it, it would be at a taper so that it can fit through that hole easier. See? But when you don't know that, sometimes you're just licking it and twisting it around in your hand and you're licking it, trying to get it all small at the end and trying to feed it through that needle. Just cut it at an angle. For all y'all who don't know that, now you know. You see this here? Oh yeah, by the way, my grandmother was a seamstress. She used to make clothes for the Four Tops, if y'all know who the Four Tops are. And the Supremes and all of those. You know, back in Motown, my grandmother was here. She used to make the clothes for them. And she had rheumatoid rheumatoid arthritis from childhood and i've always known her to be handicapped when i came into the earth I was, she was already walking with a, a crutch under her arm and her hands were all shriveled up she was a seamstress still just had to give a shout out to my grandmama dorothy <laughs> dorothy dot <laughs> but y'all see these qualities that make a man are in him not on him but y'all are looking for what's on him. They are even showing you this. Watch YouTube, guys. Go on YouTube and see. Well, let's see here. There's a prank where men will try to holler at a woman. And he know he ain't looking good. He may be even looking nerdy. He may be looking like a bum. And he does this on purpose to see if the girl will try to talk to him. Well, she won't. She will ignore him. She will walk off. She will say, I got things to do. And he's like, I just want to get your number. I'm just trying to holler at you. She's like, no, I got better things to do. He says, all right, then. He turns around and hits the alarm on his car to unlock it and get in. It's a Lamborghini sitting over there. As soon as the girl notices that he's getting in the Lamborghini, she comes right back and says, wait, 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 hold on. Wait, wait, wait. That's your car? Do you see what the fuck I'm telling you today? She looked at the man considered him to be low value so she thought well what can i get from being with a man like that nothing so she walks off but when he goes to get in his car her eyes get the money signs over it going ching 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 and she goes wait a minute wait 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 wait. now i see some value i can find from this guy what the fuck now i want to tell all you young brothers out there in the world that are chasing after vanity nice cars and nice clothes and nice money that's called mammon and if you chase after that, you will only get Jezebels in your life because Jezebels are attracted to mammon. We're going to get on the woman here in a minute. Jezebels are attracted to mammon. So if you chase mammon, you're going to get a Jezebel. That's all you're going to get. But you say you want a righteous woman. All the men right now, look at them. They're chasing after money, building their bodies all up, getting all muscular, trying to be the best man they can be. High value man, they say, even though they're not working on kindness, they're not working on patience, they're not working on anything that makes a man. But they say they're working on man, uh, being a man, which is a actually sh outward show of being a man. That's all they're working on is outwardly showing you they're a man as best as they can. That's it. Which is vanity and stupid and wrong and backwards, actually. But they work to do that. And then they wonder why they can't find a good help me. Well, you, it's because you're not laboring in the kingdom. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, son of God, and the rest shall be added. But you can't get shit added to you because you ain't seeking first the kingdom. You think the kingdom is having a bunch of money, having a big, strong-ass chest and arms, having a nice-ass, big-ass house, having nice-ass cameras in the studio where you can shoot videos in and talk about how great a lifestyle you're living, get a passport, travel all over the world, go to all these different places and deal with all these exotic women, and you still can't find a wife. You still can't find a help that's meat for you, that's right for you. And why? Because you ain't acting right for you, nigga. You ain't doing what's healthy for yourself. That's why. 
Because y'all know not what a man is because you don't let who the crew who created a man tell you what it is. You want to make it what you want it to be in your own image. And when you do that, you're creating an idol and you're sinning. You're becoming an idol. And what does idol mean? Still, stagnant, nothing, powerless. That's what it means. Idol is the devil's playground. And before we finish this message, we're going to get on you women. What's a high value woman? Let me get it right. A woman with uh, collagen put on her lips has a weave down her back with a part down the middle with the baby hairs combed. Oh, what else does she have? A woman. What makes a woman? Um, Big ass titties. A little small ass waist with a waist trainer on it. Squeezing it in. Uh, uh, BBL back there. Or some fat moved from her stomach back to back there. Or some fat taken from her thighs and put back there. Or some shit, some silicone shot up in there, back there. That's a woman. A woman who feels like she ain't enough. That's a woman. A woman with fake eyelashes sticking out from her eyes, looking like two black butterflies on her, sitting on her eyes. Uh, that's a woman. What else? A woman that's loud, braggadocious, and talks a whole bunch of shit. A woman that doesn't like to be at home, but rather be out in the streets. That's a woman. A woman that has a body count where she has for, forgot how many men she slept with. That's a woman. A woman who speaks her mind and, and speaks out of feelings. Doesn't have any logical reason to what she lives on or thinks. It's just all feeling based. That's a woman. A woman who has her is independent, makes her own money. That's a woman, a woman who get, goes to college and is highly educated and speaks with great diction. That's a woman, a woman who has a bunch of friends that are also bad bitches like her. Oh, yeah, I forgot. A bad bitch is a woman. What else? A woman that wears Dolce and Gabbana and Chanel purses. And uh, Fendi. And uh, what else? A woman that loves to show her body off to the world. Make sure she's an influencer on Instagram. And wears Fashion Nova. That's a woman. A woman who has red fabric on the bottom of her shoes. That's a woman. Woman with degrees. That's a woman. You see that? But let me see here. Let's see what I say a woman is. A woman knows that she was created from the rib of a man. So she knows that she indeed has a, is a help meet to a man. That's what a woman is. A woman is one who submits herself to her own husband. Her own Protector and lover. See? Husband. Protector, keeper. Lover, tender. Tender, keeper, husband. A woman who submits herself to him. You see? A woman who has good conversation when she speaks. That's what I say a woman is. A woman who has a pure and reverent demeanor. That's what I say a woman is. A woman who is not so concerned with her outward adorning. Like the way her hair looks. If it's done perfectly or not. Or if she has beautiful jewelry on and nice fine clothing on. It's not so concerned with that. But she's more concerned with the disposition of her heart. A woman who has unfading beauty of a gentle and a quiet, meek spirit. That's precious. 
to God. So I would assume that that's what a woman is. A woman who adorns herself like Sarah did, who obeyed her own husband, calling him Adonai. That's what a woman is. A delicate vessel. A gracious vessel. A sympathetic vessel. Tender hearted vessel, a nurturing vessel, a tender, delicate vessel, a charming, bright vessel, a comforting vessel. A peaceful vessel. That's what I call a woman. Now out of those two descriptions, which one would you rather be? Daughter of Zion? Woman of the world? Which one would you rather be? Okay. Now, you women... That are being that first woman, the one with the big ass titties and the fat removed and put here and did all that shit, injections all over. If you do that, then you will not find a righteous man because a righteous man is looking for that other woman I described. The reverent woman, the quiet woman who reverences her own husband, who is going to reverence him. That's what he's looking for. He's not looking for injections. He's not looking for weave. He's not looking for anything fake. He's looking for something real. So if you're doing something fake to yourself that makes you look like somebody that you weren't even created to be, that was not made in the image that Abba Yah created, then what are you? What have you made yourself into? An idol. And you have become idol, just like that other brother. So when you two idol people meet each other, which is that bodacious woman and that rich man, when y'all meet each other, y'all have an idol relationship. Now tell me if I'm telling you the truth or if I'm lying. It's vanity. It's a waste of time. It's stupid. She has gotten you through ill-gotten gain, which means she's gotten you with lies deceptions she doesn't look like that she's transformed herself into something else to garner your attention who does that satan does that doesn't he he disguises himself as an angel of light well this woman disguises herself as a beautiful woman of light though she is not she's empty she's insecure and sad she has no soul in there or else she wouldn't harm herself in that way for attention She wouldn't do it. How can a woman reverence her husband if she's garnering the attention of all the other men by posting pictures of herself all scantily clad on Instagram and got all kind of millions of followers on her? But she has a husband she's supposed to be reverencing. But everybody else knows what her body looks like, too. They know everything about her that her husband knows. How in the hell is that reverence? They know more about her. Men in the street know more about your wife than you know. And y'all are wondering why you're under God's judgment. Are you kidding me today or what? Have you heard what I've just described today in your hearing? This is what you love. And you can't tell me that this is not what you love if this is what you're all chasing after. Each one of you men are chasing after mammon in this world and not after God. You have not sought after the kingdom of heaven because you thought you wouldn't get what you were looking for if you were going to give up your life well he said if you try to save your life you'll lose it so while you're trying to get all your money and trying to build your body and trying to build up your credit and trying to build up your reputation trying to build up your status and trying to build up your fame and trying to build up all this shit so you can find a wife ultimately won't give it to you only serving your father will give you what you're looking for. For a good wife is given to a good man as his portion. But a wicked wife is given to a wicked man as his portion. So if you are a wicked man chasing after mammon, what will be your portion today? That wicked BBL Jezebel.
that wicked BBL Jezebel. You women, if you're chasing after that bullshit ass idol of Jezebel has sold you when you paint up your face, something that was learned by the wicked ass Azazel, did you know that? Did you know he taught you how to paint your face up like that? Now look at your Bible. If you see there's a woman in there named Jezebel that painted up her face, it said. That's strange that all of the women in the Bible, you don't read that. But when it talks about her, it says that she painted her face. Well, where did you learn that, Jezebel? According to Enoch, our forefather, you learned it from Azazel. So y'all worship Azazel today? Cain? The scapegoat, fugitive, vagabond? That's Azazel. Y'all serve him? That's who y'all serving today? The goat? Yes, Azazel is a scapegoat. Read your Bibles today. Read it. What does it say in the book of Leviticus? Chapter 16, verse 21. What does it say? Does it not say, And Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel? So all the sins of Israel are going to fall upon Azazel. And if you read Enoch, he'll tell you the same thing. And all their transgressions and all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat, and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. And the goat shall bear upon him all their iniquities upon a land not inhabited. And he shall let go the goat in the wilderness. Azazel. You see that? Did you see it? It's called a scapegoat. That's Azazel. Cain, a fugitive. In the earth, running with the sins of Israel, because he's the one that led Israel to sin. Like I just told you, making you chase money, making you fuck your bodies up, women. That's the goat, Baphomet, Azazel, leading you all astray. So who are you going to serve today? A fucking goat with a dick and some fucking titties? That's what y'all going to serve God today? How dare you, Israel? How dare you turn from your God and serve that fucking goat with a dick and some titties? That's your God today? How dare you? And if it be so, then let it be so. And let that fire consume you today. And all you men and women, you true men and women of Abiyah, stand up and be true men and women of Abiyah today. Siloam Israelah.